Hi, I'm Oisea Jones and I'm the Story Doctor. You know, one of the first things I do when I start to work with a new client is to try to get a handle on how ready the organisation is for story. Do they have the stories to support the messages they want to send? Are those messages lived or are they just organisational ideas? So a story to illustrate that might be this. I was asked to advise uh, on a story project that wasn't going so well. It was with a government department, a male dominated group, and they were wanting to recruit more women. Good idea. And uh, the way they thought about doing this was to uh, gather stories from women within their organisation to encourage other women to join. These were video stories. But the problem was the story gathering was not going well. The women were uh, very tense, apparently, in the interviews. They used organisational language a lot. Uh, they wouldn't open up. So the stories were pretty boring, actually. Now, I barely started looking at the tapes when I got a phone call from one of the women involved. And she begged me, she literally begged me to persuade her manager to let her withdraw. And when I asked her why, she said that the idea of her male colleagues watching her story made her physically sick, that she wasn't sleeping, that she thought they would laugh at her, and that all the work she'd done in building her professional presence would be ruined. So obviously I got on the phone to all the other women, and the story was pretty much the same. They actually didn't want to be a part of the project. They felt they didn't have good stories to tell, and they didn't want to encourage other women to join an organisation that they were having a hard time in themselves. One woman said to me, I just don't want to be a poster girl for something I don't believe in. So, you know, why did they agree to join the project in the first place if they had these strong feelings? Well, they felt they couldn't say no. They felt it would reflect badly on them. And the, a bigger problem was that the stories were being collected internally by the HR department. And while these women could be honest with me, an outsider, they couldn't be honest with the people that they were working with. So I think the main problem here is that there is a big gap between the message the organisation wanted to send and the reality. And they were asking these women to bridge that gap for them and essentially say something that wasn't true. And so what's the learning from this story? Well, it's that an organisation has to be ready. They have to have the stories to support the messages they want to send. Stories can work wonders, but they can't do miracles. I'm Moisea Jones, and this is The Story Doctor.